Paul, why are you showing this? We, we already went down this path. Chemical reactions aren't going to work. Yes, so we know that there's no way you can combine any of these things yep. to get anything like enough energy to power the sun for how long those pesky geologists say it was going for. And this was what 19th century people thought were the fundamental particles. But so, maybe there's something, maybe you can break an atom apart, maybe there's, it's not fundamental, maybe there are components within it. So you're saying if we look inside potentially what is creating these elements, this may be the clue to the sun? Got any better <laughs> ideas? <laughs> At this point, no. I mean, this was regarded as ridiculous. A lot of people thought, well, clearly the geologists must be wrong, or maybe we can just fudge the things slightly and bend you 10 million years up and 100 million years down and get them to agree in the middle. I mean, there are many controversies in astronomy right now. People are trying to do the same sort of thing. That's true. And eventually the tension becomes so great that you realise it's just not going to work and you have to find something new. That's right. And so maybe looking inside atoms. And the first clue that there is something inside atoms is already around at this point. And this comes out of something like uh, a balloon, static electricity. If you take a balloon and say rub it in your hair or a woolly jumper, you can pick up pieces of paper, repel other balloons. And this was the discovery of static electricity. Um, and there had to be some sort of particle being moved when you rub something with something else that caused this to happen. So what you're saying is because you're, you're doing a reaction, but it's not chemical or kinetic energy, there's something else creating that static electricity. And a lot of experimentation in the 18th, early 19th century discovered that there were, was indeed some sort of particle um, that carried electric charge that was being um, moved from one place to another. And you could actually channel this and send it down wires. And this made electricity. And this is, of course, that's the greatest discovery of all of physics, the discovery of electricity. And J.J. Thompson famously was able to find out that you could take these mysterious particles, which are normally flow down a wire and electric current, yep. these things that we now call electrons, and if you apply a strong electric field to them, a strong voltage, you can rip them out and they can fly down a vacuum tube, and you can deflect them sideways and measure their properties. So you're saying that you can see these things that are smaller than the atom flow down this chamber? So somehow when you take a whole bunch of metal atoms in this plate and you apply a really strong voltage to them, it's ripping something out of the atoms. And shooting it down here. And the something that's ripped out is a particle called an electron with a, quite a strong charge but a very, very low mass. Okay. And so this led to the idea of so-called the plum pod pudding model that basically an uh, atom is a large plum pudding of positive charge and lots of weight and it's got plums or maybe sultanas or something inside it, chocolate chips and a cookie. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I've never agreed with the plum pudding model and being a delicious model, but it was the working one. So let's call it the chocolate chip model. So you've got the, the cookie, which has got a positive charge and most of the weight. And these? Chocolate chips, which have negative charge and are only a small fraction of what's in the, the overall cookie. And if you put that electrical current through it, you can... A really strong electric food, it can wrench the chocolate chips out. See but, my mouth open, this is a good. But then you would just be left with a boring, not chocolate chip cookie. You'd be left with most of the weight yep. as a positive charged plum pudding thing. or chocolate chip uh, yep. cookie. Ch <laughs> cookie, yeah. No chocolate chips anymore. Where the, where's the nice, uh, yummy chocolate chips, the negatively charged electrons have been pulled out. So you're my son stealing all the chocolate chips off the cookies, <laughs> leaving the boring stuff you behind. You found me out, yes. <laughs> so this was the, the model back then that... Um, you, the, the, for the first time, we've seen that there was something more to atoms. They had a number of electrons. Hydrogen had one electron, helium had two, uh, and so on, the uh, atomic number. So as you go through that table, this increases that electron number. Yep. And you have left behind most of the weight, yep. which had the leftover positive charge, and um, that was the, the, the cookie or the plum pudding yep. or something like that, which was the rest of the atom. So did this start people to think that maybe you could use these smaller things or this substructure of what an element or an atom is to power the sun? Well, not really, because there didn't seem to be any way to get energy out of this. Oh, okay. I mean, you need to put energy in to pull the electrons out. Yeah, that's true, so that wouldn't help. So it doesn't really get you any energy. It's okay. very important and useful, but how does it actually help? Hmm. We should look good into it.